Hey there guys, we've now got the unit data for Winged Officer Celeste and in this video I'll be giving you my personal impressions on the unit now that we can see the entire kit. So let's just get into it. So as we know already she's a Neo Visions Plus physical damage dealer. She's a true brave shifter. And the first thing we're going to look at are categories. Um, so she does have one special category, Elite Soldiers, and that's mostly it. All the rest of the stuff is pretty, you know, standard, you know, uh, role, element, clash, etc. Um, but Elite Soldiers is the only, like, real category these days that kind of matter. And it's not that good of a category. Um, you know, using future knowledge, what we know going forward... Some of the big categories are, at the current time, would be Rebellion, would be the really big one. Uh, rebellion, Guardians, um, and then Gathering. <coughs> gathering are, are the big ones going forward because of Overdrives. Um, I'm not going to include World Saviors because we're probably not getting that collaboration. But yeah, uh, there's not much going on with Elite Soldiers in the future. There are a few, <laughs> here's kind of the joke here, there are a few like really hard EX battles or trials, etc. with missions for elite soldiers and having another option for those are really good. On the other hand, Global's been skipping all of that extra content, so we might not even get those trials in the first place for that category to matter. But as far as Overdrive goes, Celeste is not going to match any overdrives at the current time from what we know in JP. Um, you know, even though I kind of started off as a negative point for the unit, I will say just overall, I think the unit is pretty good. I do. It just, it just happens to be that categories is usually the first thing I talk about. And I do feel like her category being just elite soldiers is not doing her any favors. But I will say it's better than most global units. Most global units have no categories, no special categories. Um, so seeing at least one, it's a step forward. I'm happy for that. It's just that it's not a very good one. Um, you know, at the current time, they could always change in the future. Anyway, as far as the rest of the unit's kit. Um, so, you know, pretty typical attack power stat. Um, it seems that the spirit stat and the defense stat looks a little bit low. I didn't honestly compare to other units. Maybe it's just standard. I don't know. Um, but that's not the biggest deal in any case. Stats seem fine. Uh, immunities seem pretty good, you know, immune to most of the important stuff. <laughs> For whatever reason, it does seem like sleep immunity seems to be relatively rare on global units. Like, most global units will be immune to either blind or silence, depending if it's a mage or a physical, and then they'll mostly be immune to paralyze, confusion, and petrify, which are most of the big disabling statuses. It seems to be very rare for global units to be immune to sleep. I don't entirely know why. It's just kind of funny, I think, that sleep seems to be a very rare immunity on global units. But in any case, sleep is the only one that's uh, she's not naturally immune to, that would, you know, kind of matter. Uh, but again, you know, just equip some gear or something to fix that. Uh, and speaking of gear, she can use helmets, which is usually a big thing for me, is can they use helmets if they're a damage dealer? Because Clash of Will's helm is just dramatically better than all the other helms in the game. And being able to use that is good. She can use helms. Outstanding. Um, and then, and then uh, medium armor as well for the Clash of Will's chainmail. So that's all good. Um, as far as her TMR, we kind of covered that in the news. It's not good. Um, it's worse than a Dark Visions weapon, but it is a great sword. It will give her, uh, 1600 final attack power by memory. Yeah, which is like 500 less than a Dark Visions, or 400 less than a Dark Visions weapon. But, uh, it is a great sword, and, you know, you probably want to use great swords on her for her weapon and perils and all that kind of stuff. As far as the rest of the kit, she's got the usual thing, uh, Neo Visions plus 500 LB damage. She does have 100% Amplify for the party, three turns auto-casting. <clears throat> so this is, this is, <laughs> Global usually does this like weird little dance where Global will be slow to bring over like a JP positive change. 
then when they do bring it over, they kind of like half ass it at first. And then they then they go beyond and do even better. Like, for example, the same thing happened in Item World. Like, JP buffed Item World. Then Global was very slow at bringing it over. And then by the time Global finally did bring the JP Item World over, it was just better than JP's in the long run. Um, kind of the same thing with Global Amplifies. For example, uh, JP changed all of the AoE amps to be... Th- 100% for three turns, which is good. Global kind of didn't do that. Global's, for example, Sylvie's and Melissa's and all those, they stayed at 60, 80, 100. They didn't change to 100, 100, 100. Or they didn't change to 100 for three turns. And now we get this one, which is 100, autocast 100, autocast 100. So this is actually better than the JP version, which is 100 once because that can be dispelled this cannot be dispelled um well not only can it not be dispelled it auto cast anyway at the start of the turn this is actually sort of redundant isn't it uh one turn duration auto cast start of the turn and can't be dispelled it wouldn't be dispelled anyway but whatever anyway that's a long way to say that this version of the aue 100 amplify is of the of of like the three different types at this point, the best version. Uh, so that's good. That's good. I like it a lot. Very 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 good skill. Now that being said, it is um, her best amplify in dark visions, as we kind of covered in the news video, the recap video. You know, I I kind of wish that she had the 150 amp in dark visions too. She does not. And we're gonna talk more about her dark visions in a bit during the video, because that is one of the negatives, is she is pretty low damage in Dark Visions, and it's this is part of the reason. Bad Amplify. Uh, triple Cast, usual stuff. LB Fill, usual stuff. Uh, morale Fill. <coughs> I will say that her Morale Fill, um, as far as, like, per turn, seems... Oh, mm, let me double-check again. Does she auto-cast Morale every turn? I don't think she does, actually. No, she doesn't. No, so actually her morale is not that good because someone like, you know, Tyvist or whatever is just auto-casting 1,000 per turn. She can do like 1,000 per turn, but it's not auto-casting. She has to actually do the skill. So that's not... Yeah, her morale fill is, you know, just there. It's not great. It's not great. Um, light and lightning elements. Then she has this coordinated teamwork. Uh, 400 stat buff, 300 LBL. We, we knew this from the live stream. It also buffs her own LB. Big thumbs down. I've, I've gone over it before. I hate personal modifier buffs. She has them. Blah. I, I'm, I, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, but there it is. Yeah. But this is still a good buff for the party. So I like that. Uh, we knew about her field. Her field is 70, 70 lightning. No, no, no. 70 light. 50 lightning. We knew that already. Uh, beast killer for self and smaller amount for the party. I mean, it's good to have a killer. It's good to have a killer. Uh, you know, Beast Killer <coughs> seems to be starting to be very, very common, kind of like human. So I, I'm not impressed by Beast Killer because we've already got Melissa, who just comes to like every Clash of Wills ever these days, and she's got 250 Beast Killer. We've already got, um, uh, who is it? I think Aang has Beast Killer. And then we've got uh, either Beryl or Mirai, I think have Beast Killer. I think Beryl does. We've also got Chow, who has Beast Killer. And these are all very recent units that just all have Beast Killer. So, like, another Beast Killer? Dude, can we get some variety, please? You know, we don't need just Beast Killer after Beast Killer after Beast Killer. How about killing a bird? How about killing a spirit or something? Not just Beast. Every single day, every single day. But another Beast Killer unit. So there you go. And then the usual uh, surpassing limits, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as far as her base form LB, it's just, you know, Extreme Nova. It's just worse than her shifted LB. Really no reason to ever use the base form LB. It's literally pointless. Um, unless you're like EX0 or something. Uh, also, she's got N Thundega, N Lightga, and Bar Lightcha. So again, I'm very happy to see this. This is the kind of stuff when I say I love having little utility tools sprinkled into DPS units. This is the stuff I'm talking about. She can help you re-imbue your party after a dispel. Things like Bar Lightja or Bar Inija 
are, is great. It fills the LB gauge for the party. It gives you mitigations on demand. It gives you huge light resist. These kind of abilities are exactly what I like to see when I say I like having some support kits on my DPS units. So yeah, that's super cool to have. Um, in Clash of Wills only, only in Clash of Wills, she's got a few more skills. Um, her 150 Amplify, which we knew about. She's also got this ability, one time per use per battle, um, but a 99% general mitigation for the entire party. That is 99 general mitigation. That is incredible. I love to see this. Most of the time, when you see 99 mitigation, it's almost always for either a specific race or a specific type, like magic mitigation on Yuna or physical mitigation on Shadow Lord. You, I don't know if anyone has 99 general ever yet. They, they could. I just could be forgetting it. But in any case, she does. Only in Clash of Wills. Only in Clash of Wills. And it is a one-turn duration. But, um, so, if you're, if you're looking for the ultimate in cheese, don't forget that Oliveira can extend mitigations only for himself. And there's really no practical use for this whatsoever. But if you just wanted to be funny and make a joke... You could give Oliveira this 99 general mitigation, Yuna's 99 magic mitigation, Shadow Lord's 99 physical mitigation. Actually, Shadow Lord has 99 to both, doesn't he? I think. Or is Shadow Lord even 99? It might, might, might just be 90. In any case, and then Oliveira... Yeah, Shadow, I think Shadow Lord's only actually 90, so maybe just Yuna and then Celeste could give these to Oliveira, and then he could use his LB, which would extend these from one turn to basically infinite if you keep using the LB every five turns. And Oliveira could just be permanent 99-99 mitigation. Now, is there any use for that? Absolutely not. No, who cares that Oliveira just wouldn't die? It, it's pointless, but it's funny. It's cool. Uh, anyway, back on track here. So this is... This is a little hilarious. We've also got a Vertex ability on Celeste. Um, it's the same as Aang's, but light instead of water. Uh, I think Aang's actually is uh, just attack power. Hers is attack, defense, and spirit. No magic. I'm not sure why she hates mages, but uh, yeah. But anyway, with Clash of Wills another being retired, um, Vertex abilities don't work anymore so this is a little hilarious now there's a few things that this could mean it could mean either uh the event design team and the unit design team just don't talk to each other another thing is they're planning to give us a way to activate vertex abilities even without clash and other or it could mean they intend to like bring back clash and other Please, God, no. I hope that is not the case. What I hope is they're working on a way to activate Vertex abilities in plain old Clash of Wills. And that'd be great. That'd be awesome. You know, give us a way to use these on like a burst turn or something. That'd be super cool. Just please don't bring back Clash another. That was like the best decision ever to, 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 to cancel that. Anyway, I think that's most of the kit. Let me pop over to the shift form. I think the shift form is mostly the same thing. The shift form does have these chaining abilities with modifiers and all. Um, I, I, I did the math earlier. It's like 4,100 modifier, which is, who cares? It's, it's like whatever. It's like a, uh, by memory, I think it's like a 460 LB or something. I have to do the math again. In any case, it's a whole lot weaker than her LB. And because she's a true shift, just LB again. Don't, don't, don't bother with this. <laughs> don't bother with that. Um, and then the shifted LB is, uh, you know, with her mod buff of 120 in Dark Visions and 220 in Clash, uh, she's a 630 LB in Dark Visions and a 1,030 LB in Clash of Wills. Now, 630 on a physical unit in Dark Visions is very low. Is very low for Neo Plus. It's bad. Let's pop over and look at some damage calculations for her. Now, in Clash of Wills, her damage is phenomenal. It's 
incredibly high. It's like this huge power creep. Uh, so in Clash of Wills, she's got a 1,030 modifier. She's got her 800 LB damage buff. She's got her 150 amplify. And she qualifies for a 1,000 leader skill in Clash of Wills. So all of that being said, she is doing 3.4 billion, no, trillion. I don't know, I'm saying 3.4 B. 3.4 B damage in Clash of Wills. Zyrus is only doing 2.6. Then you go down here to Aang at 2. Uh, I, uh, okay, so like she's basically doing literally double the damage of Hayo in Clash of Wills. That is huge. That is enormous power creep. Keep in mind, this is only considering light element. Um, you know, she is... Uh, but still, but still, still, she is non-elemental, meaning you can, of course, go to any element you want. You just have a smaller amplify. But, uh, yeah, really good in Clash of Wills damage. Now, on the other hand, if you take her out of Clash of Wills, her damage is, I mean, for a Neo Plus... It is not good. Obviously, it's better than most regular Neo units, but for a Neo Plus, and I actually forgot to label her as NV Plus. I'll put that on when I finish the video. Um, but for a Neo Plus, it's, well, literally the worst Neo Plus in the game in terms of damage. Uh, because she only has a 630 modifier. Because she's a physical unit, she doesn't get focus. Usually, only mages get 630 because they have focus abilities. This is a 630, whereas the standard for Neo Pluses is 730. She's only got 630 in Dark Visions. Um, and then she's only got 100 Amplify in Dark Visions. And then in Dark Visions, at the current time, she only has access to, at best, a 750 leader skill. There, there, there are no 1,000 leader skills for her in Dark Visions that qualify for her categories. Um, that'll probably change in the future. So in the future, she should qualify for a 1,000 or better with, like, um, Yuna going forward if Yuna doesn't get skipped. But there you go. Anyway, yeah, in Dark Visions, her damage is pretty bad for a Neo Plus. I, I can't stress that enough. Obviously, it's better than nearly every, or, or literally every single regular Neo unit. But for a Neo Plus, it's the worst in the game in Dark Visions. Um, so, final verdict. What do I think of the unit? Overall, I think she's good. I think it's a good unit. I like her. Um, so, she's got, uh, just a quick recap, uh, some, some of the high points. 70, 70 field, the LB damage buff, the 400 stat buff. She's got bar light show, which is amazing. Um, the... In Thundega stuff, she's got the 90% or 99, 99% is so much better than, than 90%. It's literally 10 times better than 90% um, mitigation. Because, you know, the higher you get to 100% mitigation, the more each point matters. I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole math of it. But, yes, like going from 92 to 93 mitigation is something like, I don't know, a trillion times better than going from like 50 to 60. You get what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, 99 mitigation. That's basically invulnerability for a turn. It's basically invulnerability for one turn. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, she does have perfect dispel on her normal attack as well. So, so because she's a physical unit, you know, giving her counter response, so give her a blizzard orb, and she'll counter a perfect dispel pretty often um, if the boss is using AoE physical attacks. Or magic attacks if you're not covering magic. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of good points. Damage is really, really good in Clash of Wills. It's not good in Dark Visions um, for a Neo Plus. Uh, so as far as the negatives, um, negatives are that she is reliant on this idiotic modifier buff. I hate that. It is a five-turn duration. So to be fair, it's a five-turn duration. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, I just, that's just a personal pet peeve of mine. I hate these, and they I figured they'd stop doing them, but of course not, they don't. And the other negative is that she doesn't have any good categories. Like, she does have elite soldiers, but that's not the best category ever. I, I, if she had Rebellion or Gathering or Guardians, one of those would be like, you know, a future Overdrive unit would be great. But no, she doesn't have any of those. Um, and then the other big, big, huge elephant in the room is she's Light Element. 
And from what we know from the JP server, Light Element has no future, like, whatsoever. Um, all the other current elements at least have a future. Water gets a lot better with, like, Cloud and all that. Um, Dark gets a little bit better with, like, Stavlenka and all that. Fey, etc. Um, you know, Fire becomes God tier in the future. Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to care about Earth because that's all collaboration stuff we're not going to get, probably. Um, but Light just kind of, like, dead ends. Like, after Maria, Light just stops. And there, there's, there's no improvements going forward with Light. Um, I do think, like, one or two of the, the Final Fantasy VII's do also cover Light. I think Tifa, for example, also has Light in her kit. I think Red also has Light in his kit. But, like, those units are just so much better suited for other elements. You're not really going to build, like, a Light team around Tifa. No, she's going to go on, like, a rebellion party with Cloud or something. Because she has fire, too. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's the negatives. On the whole, I feel like she's a good unit. I do feel like she's a good unit. She's got a lot going for her that's really nice. Nice support kit. Uh, the rotation is pretty smooth, other than this modifier buff, which is a minor nitpick. This is not a big deal. It's, it's more of a personal pet peeve for me than an actual downside. Uh, it's minor. You cast it once per five turns. I just wish she didn't have it. I, I, when I say that, what I mean is I wish it was built into the LB itself. Not that I wish her damage was lower. No, I wish this was just part of the LB and you didn't have to cast this. Um, but yeah, a lot of good stuff going too. The field is amazing. Awesome field. Um, <laughs> it's not a negative that she has Beast Killer, but I wish it was a different, a different race. Like there's been so much Beast Killer lately. Like we don't need more Beast Killer. Um, yeah, nice unit. Nice unit. So I guess the final question is, do I plan to pull for her? Huh. <sighs> I think I'm going to attempt this Clash of Wills before making that call. If I can take out this Clash of Wills without her, I think I'm probably going to skip her. Because even though I, I give her my stamp of approval, and I think she's a good unit, well-designed, a few flaws, but for the most part, all good, um, the, the, the big negative is Light Element, and I, I just can't get past the fact that Light Element has no future. I just can't get past that. So, I'm, I, I'm, I'm probably going to be passing on her, unless I just require her for this Clash of Wills. And then, even if I do require her for the Clash of Wills, like... That's kind of a kind of a sticky situation because I'm the kind of person like if this one unit is literally required for the content, then I would like just skip that on principle because I don't want to support the unit being required and I don't want the game to ever revolve around a singular unit. You see what I'm saying? So that would kind of frustrate me if she was required for the Clash of Wills. But on the other hand, if I can do it without her, that's like a weird situation, huh? Because, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try Clash of Wills tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Um, but the unit is good. If you want to pull for her, I feel like you're probably doing the right thing. The unit is very strong. I, I, I'm, just ha I'm just struggling getting past the fact that she's a light unit. And light units... Are going to die off very very soon from what we know and i'm concerned about that i'm concerned about that i wish she was fire i wish she had fire in her kit then i'd be like oh let me go for this immediately because if she had fire i'd be like all over we know fire is going to hit pretty hard very soon anyway that that's the that's the quick preview for now it wasn't as quick as i was hoped i kind of rambled for a bit but there you go see you for clash tomorrow